I am going to set up the student paper in basic APA format using Microsoft Word 2010 and Word 2013 for Windows. One of the writing consultants in the Writing Center generously shared his paper. For the purposes of this tutorial, I made some changes to the paper, including changing the title, stripping out footnotes, and altering other parts of the paper. Please note that if your instructor has assignment requirements that vary from the directions in this tutorial, that you should do what your instructor prefers. First, I'll go up to the View menu. I want to make sure that Print Layout is selected, which it is. Next, I'll check the box for Ruler. Now I have a ruler going across the top of the page and down the side. Next, I'll go to the Home tab which shows me a variety of formatting options, what Microsoft calls the ribbon. Clicking on the Home tab will make the ribbon go away. Clicking on the Home tab again will bring back the ribbon just as quickly. Next, I'll go to the Page Layout tab and go to Margins here on the left. I want the option which gives me one inch margins all the way around, top, bottom, left, and right, in this case the normal option. If you don't see an option like this, you can go to Custom Margins and make sure that your margins are one inch all the way around, then click on the OK button. Our next task is to change the text in the body of the paper. Under the Home tab, I'll go to the right to the Select drop-down menu. I'll choose Select All so that all of the text in the paper is highlighted. Next, I'll go to the Font area. I'll change Cambria to Times New Roman. The font size is already 12, which is what I want. Times New Roman point size 12 is standard for APA style, although your instructor may let you select another serif font, such as Palatino. Next, I'll go to the paragraph area. I'll select line and paragraph spacing, followed by line spacing options. Under the Line Spacing drop-down menu, I'll select Double. We want to make sure also that there is no extra spacing between paragraphs, so here under Spacing, Before and After should both be zero. In this case, I need to change After from 10 point to zero point. Then I'll click on the OK button. Now I'll deselect the text. You can see that the entire text is in Times New Roman point size 12, consistently double spaced with no extra line spacing between paragraphs. Next, I'll center the title. First, I'll select it. I'll go up to the Home tab. I'll go over to the Paragraph area and select Center so that the title is now centered. Notice that everything is consistently double spaced. There is no extra line spacing between the title and the first paragraph. You also don't put your own title in quotation marks and you don't underline it. The title is in title case, which means that all important words and proper nouns are capitalized at the beginnings of words. You do not capitalize articles, conjunctions, and prepositions with the exception of the first word in the title. So in this case, on is not capitalized but a, uh, or a, is because a is the first word in the title. Now, I could change the title to be a two-part title like this. The word a, which now appears in the middle of the title, remains capitalized. The first word after the colon is always capitalized, even if it is an article, conjunction, or preposition. Next, I'm going to insert a title page and an abstract page before the body of my paper. Your instructor may not require you to have an abstract page, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll show you how to do that. You should check with your instructor to see what the specific expectations are for your paper. So here I have my cursor blinking before the first word in the title. Next I'll go to the Insert tab. I'll select Page Break. You'll notice that a new page has been inserted before the body of my paper. I'll go to the top of the abstract page. If your cursor is not blinking in the middle, you need to go to the Home tab and in the Paragraph area, select Center for Center Alignment. 
Next, I'll type in the abstract title. I'll press the Enter Return key once. I'll go back to the Home tab. I want Left Alignment now. And I'll begin the paragraph for my abstract. While the rest of your paper uses paragraph indents, you don't indent the abstract paragraph. The abstract is a summary of your paper. Typically, it is 150 to 200 words. Again, you should check with your instructor for specific expectations for the abstract. We're ready now to leave behind the abstract. Obviously, we don't have an abstract here as of yet, but you get the idea in terms of formatting. We are ready to add the title page. I have clicked so that my cursor is blinking in front of the word abstract. I'll insert the title page by going up to the insert tab and selecting page break again. So now you can see that another page has been inserted this time before the abstract page. But before we go to the title page, I'm going to click here again in the paper and I'm going to scroll down to the body of the paper, which is now page 3, I'm going to select that title. I want to copy it so that I can later paste it on the title page. So I've highlighted the title. I'll go to the Home tab, and in the clipboard area, I'll select Copy. I'll deselect the title so I don't accidentally delete it. I'll go back up to the top of the paper, this time moving up to the title page. You'll notice my cursor is blinking on the left, so I need to go to the Home tab. And in the paragraph area, select Center. So i am got center alignment here. I'm clicking in the paper again. And I want my title to start about a third of the way down the page on the title page. So I'm pressing the Enter key about you know, four or five times here. And then I'm going to go to the Home tab and select Paste. So I've now pasted my title so I didn't have to retype it and possibly make a mistake. Next, I'll press the Enter key and I'll add the student's name. Press the Enter key again. Type the school affiliation. This is what you want for APA style. Everything is consistently double spaced and centered. Title of paper, student name, and school. Some instructors may require you to put in an author note on the bottom part of your title page. Usually they are not required for undergraduate papers, but you should check with your instructor. If you're a student, you could put in an author note that looks like something I saw for a paper in a health sciences class. You would have your centered title for author note. On the next line, you would select left alignment. You would do a paragraph indent. Type your name, comma, your department, in this case Department of Health Sciences, comma, followed by your university affiliation with a period at the end. Then you would hit the return key or the enter key and press the tab key for a new paragraph indent and have a statement like this. Your name is now a senior at the University of South Dakota. Of course you would substitute whatever level you're at, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and your university affiliation. You would press the enter key again paragraph indent and have something like this. This paper fulfills the critical writing component of the course, comma, HSC 440, comma, major issues in health and human services, period. Of course, substituting your information. And then hit the enter return key again and tab for a new paragraph indent and type a statement like this. Correspondence concerning this paper should be addressed to your name, comma, your email address, period. Again, 
you should check with your instructor to see if an author note is required. Graduate students, scholars, and others who are interested in the exact professional requirements for an author note can find information about the author note in the APA manual or on the Purdue Online Writing Lab website. Next, we'll create a running head for the title page, and we'll also create a slightly different running head for the rest of the pages in the paper. To create a running head for the title page, first I'll select the Insert tab, followed by Header. In this Header drop-down menu, at the very bottom, I'll select Edit Header. I'll now go up to Header and Footer Tools and click on Design. I'll select Different First Page. Remember, we're creating not only a running head for the title page, but a separate one for the rest of the pages as well. I'll return to my cursor here on the left side of the header. I'll type the words running head followed by a colon, then I'll press the spacebar once. Then I'll type a shortened version of the title of the paper all in caps. You'll notice that the words running head are not in caps. Only the first word is capitalized at the beginning of the word. Your title in the running head should not exceed 50 characters, including spaces. Next, I'm going to delete the current tabs and create my own. I'll go to Page Layout. And over here in the Paragraph area, you'll see this tiny little symbol right here. Uh, it's called the Paragraph Dialog Box Launcher. I'll click on it, and it brings up this little box. In the bottom left hand part of this box, you'll want to click on Tabs. Next, we're going to clear out all the current tabs and get a fresh start. I'll click on the Clear All button. In this Tab Stop Position blank, I'll type 6.5. For alignment, I want Right. I'll click on the Set button, and I'll click on OK. My cursor is blinking here at the end of my running head title. I'm going to press the tab key on the keyboard once. So now you'll see my cursor blinking over on the right under my new tab. I'm going to select the insert tab. I'm going to select page number followed by current position followed by plain number one here under simple. It has correctly inserted the page number. The next thing I need to do is to select all of the text for my running head and the page number. I'll go up to the Home tab. I'm going to change that Cambria font to Times New Roman. Remember, we changed the font to Times New Roman for the body. We want it to be the same for the header. The font size should be 12, which it is. The next thing I'm going to do is to deselect this header. I'm going to select the shortened title and the page number. I'm going to copy it to use for the second running head that we'll create. I'll go to the Home tab and select Copy. Note that I didn't copy the words running head because for the second running head that we're creating, we do not include those words. So I'll deselect this text. I'm going to scroll down to the abstract page. Notice that there is no header right now, no running head created here yet because we're going to do that right now. I've clicked here in the header so that my cursor is blinking on the left. I'll redo the tabs by clicking on page layout and again, here under Paragraph, selecting the Paragraph dialog box launcher and clicking on Tabs down in the bottom left-hand corner. Again, I'll clear all the tabs that are there. In the Tab Stop Position blank, I'll type 6.5. Under Alignment, I'll select Right, click on the Set button, and click on OK. So I have set the same tab as we had before. I'm going to paste the text that I copied. I'll go to the Home tab and select Paste. 
With the copy and paste, I have put in the shortened version of the title and the correct page number. Again, we do not have the words running head. That's how the second running head is different. You'll see that the same running head appears on the rest of the pages. I will go up under header and footer tools to design and click on the close header and footer button. So that is how you create running heads. I'm here on page 3 of the paper. Remember, we inserted the title page and the abstract, so this moved the beginning of the body of the paper down to page 3. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on in-text citations. I'll just point out a few things. Originally, the student used footnotes in his paper. That's not standard APA style. You always want to check to see what your instructor wants. Even if your instructor's expectations are different from the standards for the style, you should go with what your instructor prefers. I'm going to show you how to insert a footnote in case your instructor wants you to use them. So, I'll put my cursor right here after the text that I want footnoted. I'll go up to References and I'll select here in the footnotes area, Insert Footnote. It inserted a superscript 1, a raised 1, here right after the text I want footnoted. At the bottom of the page, it put a corresponding 1 and the cursor is blinking where I would type the text for my footnote. Now, I'm not going to use footnotes, so I'm going to get rid of that text. I'll show you what is more typical for APA style for citing sources in the body of your paper. We'll look at this example. It begins in section 95, he says, comma, beginning quotation mark, the majority have a right to act and conclude the rest. We'll go to the end of this quotation. By the will and determination of the majority, ending quotation mark, in parentheses, the author's last name, the year, and the page number with a period at the end. In APA style, you always include the author's last name and the year of publication, and when you quote, you always include the specific page number. For paraphrases and summaries, you don't need to include the page number, but you're encouraged to do so. There is no period after the last quoted word, even though the original statement may have had a period. That's because you are integrating this quotation into your own sentence, so you only have the period at the end of your sentence. Another way that the student writer could have cited this source is to put the citation at the beginning of the sentence. So, I could change this wording, replace he with lock, put the date in parentheses, and then I'll get rid of that same information here and just leave the page number with P period space 55. You often see this, the author's name followed by the year, and if it's a quotation, the page number at the end in parentheses. So that's another way that the author could have cited the source. If you have a quotation that is 40 words or more, you should set it off in a freestanding block of text, indenting about half an inch. So this is the quotation that I want to set off by itself because it's long. It's 40 words or more. Um, I'm going to click right in front of the first quotation mark and press the enter key so it goes into a separate line, but I do want to get rid of that paragraph indent, so I'll click on the backspace. Next I'm going to select that quoted text, including the citation at the end. I'm going to go up to the Home tab, and in the Paragraph area, I'm going to select Increase Indent. So it has increased the indent half an inch. If you find that you need to adjust that, you can do that in the Ruler area. So next, because I have indented this entire quotation, the indenting takes the place of the quotation mark, so I need to get rid of those beginning and ending quotation marks. The other thing I need to change is to move that period to be after the word it, that last quoted word. This is different from the example I showed you before. 
and in fact most of the time your period goes at the end of the sentence but because this is a block quotation the period goes here instead with your citation at the end. The entire quotation should be double spaced as shown here with no extra line spacing around the quotation. So that's how you do a block quotation. I've moved down to the references near the end of the paper. We're going to format them. A lot of students are tempted to press the enter or return key several times in order to get the references to start on a new page. Don't do that. You may add text or delete text and that will change where your references begin. Instead, you want to use the insert page break feature. With my cursor blinking here in front of the word references, I'll go up to the insert tab and select page break. That automatically puts my references on the next page, which is what I want. Now, I'm going to center my references heading. I'll select it. I'll go to the Home tab and I'll select Center. Now my references heading is centered. I'll deselect it. Next, I'll select all of my references. Note that you only want to select your sources you don't want to select the rest of your paper, so just that part of your paper should be highlighted. Next, I'll go back to the Home tab. Under Paragraph, I'll select Line Spacing. I'll select Line Spacing Options. Here, I'll go to the Special drop-down menu. I'll select Hanging, and I'll click on the OK button. You'll see now that there is a hanging indent for each of the sources listed. Only the first line for each source is not indented. The second and third lines for these sources are indented, which is what you want. I'll point out a few basic aspects of APA style for the references page. In APA style, you list the sources in alphabetical order by last name. You'll notice that the first name is not spelled out. You use initials instead, followed by the year in parentheses. For scholarly articles, you use sentence case, which means you capitalize only the first word and proper nouns. You don't put article titles in quotation marks. Journal titles are italicized and put in title case. Here is something you may not have realized. The volume number needs to be italicized. Just a weird little aspect of APA style. The issue number, however, is not italicized but appears in parentheses right next to the volume number. Everything, of course, is consistently double-spaced. So that's how you set up a paper in basic APA format. For additional help with APA style, consult the Publication Manual of the American Psychological Association, 6th edition. You can also consult the APA section of your grammar handbook or the APA section of the Purdue Online Writing Lab website. ID Week's library also has some helpful handouts and information on APA style at libguides.usd.edu forward slash APA. You can also visit your local writing center. We can help you with a variety of styles including APA, MLA in Chicago, as well as other styles and of course other aspects of writing. University of South Dakota students, staff, and faculty who are on campus can visit the Writing Center in ID Week's library, room 133, on the west side of the Academic Commons. USD distance students can seek help in the online Writing Center in D2L. More information is available on the Writing Center website at link.usd.edu forward slash Writing Center.